नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो डियर डिवोरीज वी आर स्टार्टिंग अवर भक्ति शास्त्री स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भगवत गीता चैप्टर फोर टुडे आज चैप्टर फोर इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज और ज्ञान विभाग योग सो इन थर्ड चैप्टर वी हैव सीन दैट द नॉलेज ऑफ द लिविंग एंटिटी इज कवर्ड बाय द इटरनल एनिमी लस्ट so what is the knowledge of the living entity who has given this knowledge when this knowledge is given so to to answer this question the connection is that knowledge of the living entity which is covered by the lust what is that knowledge sri krishna begins the chapter 4 and the chapter four's first section transcendental knowledge of krishna was 1 to 10 so this is the first section transcendental knowledge of krishna given by krishna also same thing this is the knowledge of the krishna given by krishna himself so let us begin the verse number 1 <coughs> shri bhagavan vacha imam vivasvate yogam proktvan aham avyayam vivaswan manve praho manur iksha vakve abhrvit Imam means this. Imam means this. Vivas vate yogam. Imam ve ha vivas vate yogam. Vivas vate is the name of the person vivas one. Yogam avyayam. which means indestructible knowledge and proktwan means is spoken by i spoke aham proktwan and then vivaswan manve praha and vivaswan spoke to the manu manur ikshvaku abave arbhrit and manu spoke this to ikshvaku so this 
So in this verse, <coughs> Vivaswate is Vivaswan, the sun god. And sun god gave it to the Manu, the son of the sun god. And this is the seventh Manu. This is the Manu which is ruling right now. His name is Vivaswat Manu. So the Manu is a sort of title. And there are 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. This first Manu is Swayambhu Manu. And the seventh Manu, the name of the seventh Manu is Vavaswat Manu. So this is the name of his seventh Manu, the son of Vivaswan. And then Manu is spoke the seventh Manu, Vivaswat Manu, spoke this knowledge to Ikshavaku. Ikshavaku is also son of Manu. And this Vivaswat Manu, out of the ten son of the Vivaswat Manu, the one is Ikshavaku. Generally, the word Ikshavaku means one who is born from sneezing. Srila Prabhupada writes, herein we find the history of Bhagavad Gita traced from the remote time when it was delivered to the royal Earl of all planet. And who is the royal Earl of all planet? Sun. Beginning from the sun planet. And in Brahma Santa we know Surya Chakshu Sarva Granana. Is one of the verse of Brahma Santa that Sun God is the I or the royal order of all planets. Surya Chakshu Sarva Grahana. The king of the all planets are especially meant for the protection of the inhabitant. Now, Surya, how is a king? <coughs> <clears throat> there are two dynasties of the Kshatriyas, the Surya ones and the Chandra ones, the Sun dynasty and the Moon dynasty. And these are all the royal order of all the planetary system and they are the rulers. So since they are the kings of all planets, their special duty is to protect the inhabitant and therefore the royal order should understand the science of Bhagavad Gita. In order to be able to rule the citizen and protect them from material bondage to the lust. Can you see this connection now between the third chapter and fourth chapter? Material bondage to lust which is the greatest shackle to keep conditioned soul within this material world. And the royal order or the ruling class has must to has to protect the citizen from this bondage. And only way to do accomplish this uh, task is science, understanding the science of Bhagavad Gita. Why it is spoken to Bhagavad Gita, my understanding of in time I speak is the one thing is one sun is enlightening the whole universe. There is no separate sun for any country on this planet. One sun is for Russia, China or America or India. This, this sun wakes up everybody, gives life to everybody, gives light to everybody. And, uh, and, and Sri Krishna gives a message to us that this Bhagavad Gita is also universal. It will give life and light 
of enlightenment from ignorance and material bondage to the lust. This Bhagavad Gita will give the same knowledge. So, giving knowledge to some God signifies universality of teaching of Bhagavad Gita. And Srila Prabhupada really understood and realized it and distributed it universally, at least on the international le uh, uh, platform. The second meaning of the giving to Surya Dev is Surya Dev is always <clears throat> performing his duty without fail, every day, without fail. So one who is trained in the science of Bhagavad Gita is alert every day in his practice of responsibility as well as science of soul, both. He is alert for his uh, constitutional duty of the soul and uh, constitutional duty of body. He, he is, he is uh, he is always engaged in the activity. And also the sun purifies the dirty places. Similarly, the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita purifies the conditioned soul from contamination. A sort of significance given to the sun god. <coughs> <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada writes, human life is meant for cultivation of spiritual knowledge. In eternal days, what is the spiritual knowledge? Which is spiritual knowledge? Living entities should... Uh, Recording uh, in progress. Which is spiritual knowledge a uh, living entity must cultivate? The knowledge of eternal relationship with Supreme Personality of God. And the, uh, now, this is the, uh, this is the necessity for the human life. And the executive head of all states and all planets are obliged to impart this lesson to the citizen by education, by culture and by devotion, these three things. by education means establishing gurukuls the kings used to have gurukuls and and the learned brahmans used to teach the student without any fee there was no fee meant to be paid by the parents for the education of the children Government used to make arrangement, not only for the education, but for books, for food and for everything. So this is the education and then culture. Culture means uh, the head of the state must have a culture of Krishna consciousness establish the culture of Krishna consciousness for the whole country and devotion and that culture should be say devotional culture education mostly based on the culture and devotion now you see what Srila Prabhupada has given in Krishna consciousness he gave the education in the form of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam. He gave the culture of wearing the Vaishnava dress, applying the tilak, having the food prepared in a vegetarian Vaishnava way, offering to the deities. And then he also trained them the Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti the process of practicing sadhan bhakti 
So this is uh, what Srila Prabhupada has actually given in Krishna consciousness is education, culture and devotion. Most of the people went from the India, they only gave the bookish knowledge, no culture, no devotion. So Srila Prabhupada is actually given the culture of Krishna consciousness to the Western world. Therefore, there is a transformation. Culture is the most important. Our, it means when we are practicing devotion, at least at home, we should have a devotional cloth, we should have a de devotional atmosphere, like generally the sari for the ladies, dhoti, kurta for the male. This is the devotional culture. Applying tilak, having kanti beads, our neck beads and everything. This is a culture. Eating with one hand is a culture. See, this is the culture Srila Prabhupada has given actually. So these are the three things we should at least in our Namhata or in our own preaching we should uh, meditate on this purport of Srila Prabhupada that how we can impart the knowledge, spiritual knowledge of relationship of the living entity with Krishna, Jivera Swarupa, Krishna Ranitya Das. And then how can we teach them this culture, educate them through Bhagavad Gita and other scripture. And also we should give them devotional culture. And then the whole 64 item of sadhan bhakti that is the devotion which we practice that we will discuss in nectar of devotion in other words the executive heads of all these states are intended to spread the science of krishna consciousness so it means when we are preaching the science of krishna krishna consciousness we have to educate people we have to give them culture we have to give them devotion so this is our practical application of preaching. So that the people may be, may take the advantage of this great science of Krishna consciousness and pursue a successful path, utilizing the opportunity of the human form of life. Srila Prabhupada said, when I was preaching in the Western world, I never say, I am here to give you some religion. I am giving you the science of soul and science of love of God. So Krishna, uh, Krishna consciousness is science of soul and science of relationship of the soul with the Supreme Lord and that is the love of God. So it is not religion but it is science. Srila Prabhupada writes, in this millennium the sun God is known as Vivaswan. It means also the personality of sun god changes. The king of the sun which is the origin of all planets within the solar system. And then Brahma Sainta verse is quoted. Raja Samasta Suramortir Asesha Teja Yasya Agya Brahmati Samrita Kala Chakro Govinda Madhi Purisham Tamam Bajami. Somebody can read the translation. Yes. Let me worship Lord Brahma say the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda Krishna, who is the original person and under whose order the sun, which is the king of all planets, is assuming immense power and heat. The sun represents the eye of the Lord and traverses in orbit in obedience to the to his order. Thank Pari you. Krishna. Assuming immense power and heat. This happened I okay. The sun is king of the planets and the sun god are at present of the name Vivaswan rules the sun planet which is controlling all the other planets by supplying heat and light. 
is rotating under the order of Krishna and Krishna originally made Vivaswan his first disciple to understand the science of Bhagavad Gita. The Gita is not therefore a speculative treatise for insignificant mundane scholars but is the standard book of knowledge coming from the time immemorial. So this is the authenticity of Bhagavad Gita. So it is not manufactured by some person but is coming down from time immemorial. So it's not a mundane scholar's presentation. In the Mahabharata Shanti Park, we can trace the history of Gita as follows. Treta Yuga Dao Chatato Vivaswan Manveta Dao Treta Yuga Adao In the beginning of the Treta Yuga Vivaswan Manve Vivaswan gave this uh, science of Krishna consciousness or Bhagavad Gita to Mano. Manascha Loka Brati Artham and Manu for the maintenance of the living entities. Sutai Ikshuvakve Dadao he gave to his son Ikshuvaku. Ikshuvakunancha Kathito Vyapya Lokan Avastitaha and Ikshvaku was the king of this planet who established the royal order of the Ikshvaku dynasty that is Ayodhya and and he educated the culture and devotion of Bhagavad Gita to his citizens. In the beginning of the millennium known as Treta Yuk. The science of the relationship with the Supreme was delivered by verse 1 to Manu. Manu being the father of mankind gave it to his son Maharaj Ikshvaku, the king of this planet earth, the forefather of the Raghu dynasty in which Lord Ramachandra appeared. Therefore Bhagavad Gita has existed in human society from time of Maharaj Ikshvaku. Uh, I don't have right now the uh, history but uh, with me but I know before Vivaswan Krishna also spoke the science to another parampara. There is a evidence in a scripture. And this is the uh, to the sun god is in this uh, section of Mahabharata. Because Bhagavad Gita is within Mahabharata. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita existed in human society from the time of Maharaj Ikshvaku. At the present moment, we have just passed through the 5000 years of the Kali Yuga, which last uh, for, uh, 400,000, 432,000 years. Before this, there was Dwapur Yuga, 800,000 years, double than that. Before that was Treza, Tretapur Yuga, three times that. Thus from at least 200,000 and 205,000 5, years back, 200, uh, Manu spoke Bhagavad Gita to his disciple son, and son Maharaj Ikshvaku, the king of this planet. The age of the current Manu is calculated to last. This is age of Man Manu. And how much is this? I don't know how to say it's 30, 30 crore, 53 lakhs. Of which uh, 12 crore and 4 lakh has passed. So one Manu lives for 71 Chatur Yugis. 
and such fourteen Manu rule in the one day of Brahma. <clears throat> so accepting that, before the birth of Manu, the Gita was spoken by the Lord to the his disciple, Sun God, viewers one. A rough estimate is that Gita was spoken at least, at least means when it came to the human society. Bara, uh, 12 crore four lakh years back and it was before that to the Ikshuvaku, uh, to the sun god and in human society it has been extant for two million years it was re-spoken re by Lord again to Arjuna about five thousand years ago <clears throat> that is the rough estimate of the history of the Gita according to the Gita itself and according to the version of the speaker Sri Krishna. It was spoken to the Sun God Vivasan because he is also the Kshatriya and is the father of all Kshatriya coming in a uh, Sun dynasty who are descendant of the Sun God or the Surya once Kshatriya. Because Bhagavad Gita is as good as the Vedas being spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead because Veda is called, Vedas are called Aparushya, coming from the Supreme Lord. And the Bhagavad Gita is also coming from the Supreme Lord. This knowledge is Aparushya, superhuman, Aparushya. Veda is called Aparushya. And Bhagavad Gita is also Apur, Aparushya. Since the Vedic instructions are accepted as they are, Without human interpretation, Gita must have therefore be accepted without mundane interpretation. The mundane wranglers may speculate on Gita on their own way, but that is not Bhagavad Gita as it is. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita has to be accepted as it is from the disciplic succession. And it is described here in that Lord spoke to the Sun God, and the sun god spoke to his own son Manu, and Manu spoke to his son Ikshavaku. We are going to the verse number two. Evam parampara praptam raja rishyo viduho sakale nehamata yogo nashta parantapa. The saintly kings raja rishya understood this knowledge imam viduhu vidu means knowledge veda vidu understood received in the sapric succession imam parampara prapta this is the often quoted verse by Srila prabhupada by influence of powerful time maha mahata kalena this disciple succession of yoga was broken iya yoga nashtaha Parantapa addressed to the Krishna Arjun, O afflictor of the enemies. Now, let me tell you one thing before we go to the purport. There are two paramparas. One is Raj Rishi Parampara and the other is Rishi Parampara. Raj Rishi Parampara is broken. But the Rishi Parampara continues. You see in our book Bhagavad Gita there is a Parampara of Gita is given. Coming from Krishna through Vyasadev to Brahma, Brahma to Vyasadev, Vyasadev and then there is whole chain of Narada and then whole chain from Madhu Acharya, all those disciples of Madhu Acharya to the uh, our line through parampara, then there are all names. In this name, there is no list. In this list, there is no name of Arjun. Arjun, the Gita is spoken to the Arjun is a Rishi par is a Raj Rishi parampara, and there is a Rishi parampara which is existing always. But the Raj Rishi parampara is broken because that is the the main duty of the kings is to protect the citizen from the 
bondage to the lust by giving education, culture, and devotion of relationship with the Lord. That parampara is broken. The Rishi parampara continues. The whole list we have in Bhagavad Gita of the parampara. So Srila Prabhupada writes, it is, we are reading the purport. It is, it is clearly stated that Gita was especially meant for the saintly kings. So it's especially meant for the saintly kings because, because they are the rulers and they, if they follow, the citizen will automatically follow. There's no need of preaching. They, 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 they legislatively institute the teaching of Gita as their law. Because they were to execute its purpose in ruling over the citizen. It means they make a... This is when Srila Prabhupada was expected to meet then the Prime Minister of India, uh, Indra Gandhi. Srila Prabhupada has given the whole manifesto uh, for those who are going to be selected member of parliament. They must follow the four regular principles and they must uh, you know, chant Hare Krishna and all these uh, of, uh, Krishna consciousness uh, science he wanted to institute uh, as, a, as a rule by the government. That is the purpose that government can institute this as a legal document for the citizen to follow. Certainly, Bhagavad Gita was never meant for the demonic persons who would dissipate its value for no one's benefit and would devise all types of interpretation according to personal whims. <coughs> Not now, Srila Prabhupada is thinking sometime even there were head of these states, but they were not Krishna conscious. They have not received the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and Parampara. So they were giving their own, own interpretations. And they have a separate interest than interest of Krishna. Therefore they are of a demonic nature. <coughs> <coughs> demonic nature means uh, having an interest separate than interest of Krishna. <coughs> as soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of the unscriptural commentators, there arose the need to re-establish the disciplic succession. It means in a due course of time, the, the Raj Rishis were bereft of the true essence of Bhagavad Gita and there were many interpretations at that time by maybe the uh, scholars or the what is called the Raj Gurus, they were giving guidance to the kings. They have misinterpreted Bhagavad Gita, therefore essential Bhagavad Gita was lost. And therefore Krishna felt that by the end of uh, Dwapur Yuga there is a need to establish, establish the next Raj Rishi Parampara. And Arjun is in a moon dynasty. <coughs> also, somewhere in the Bhagavat, <coughs> Bhagavatam, it is written that sometime this knowledge was given, in one millionum the knowledge is given through the uh, moon para, uh, uh, Kshatriya pra, Parampara coming in the uh, Chandra once and sometime it is given uh, the next time um, the alternate it is given by the Kshatriya and the Surya once. So the both uh, these dynasties of the Kshatriyas were made the recipient of this knowledge alternatively. 5000 years ago it was detected by the Lord himself that the disciple succession was broken. And therefore, he declared that the purpose of Gita appeared to be lost. Gita is eternal because in the first verse, Krishna says, Imam vivasvate yogam proktam aham avyayam. Avyayam means 
inexhaustible, everlasting, cannot be destroyed. And the next word says, Sakale Nehamata Yogo Nashta. So what Yogo Nashta means, the yoga which is Avyaya, how it has become Nashta. It's not the yoga is Nashta. It is the recipient of the yoga. The Raj Rishis, they are no more existing. They have become corrupted with the demonic mentality. They have un misunderstood and misinterpreted the purpose of Gita. That is the meaning of Gita is last. And therefore, ah, uh, the purpose of Gita appeared to be last. In the same way, at the present moment, Prabhupada is now relating to the time when Prabhupada wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is. In the same way, at the present moment also, there are so many editions of Gita, especially in English, but almost all of them are not according to the authoritative disciplic succession. This is this, which is this disciple succession? This is Rishi Parampara. Rishi Parampara means coming from the one of the four bona fide Vaishnava Parampara. Actually, any Parampara is only recognized when they have a commentary on Bhagavad Gita, on Vedanta Sutra, and some Upanishad. So, we have commentary on Bhagavad Gita by Ramanuja Acharya, by Madhva Acharya. By in our line, we have Balde Vidya Bhushan and Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur to establish the parampara. So there was no commentary <coughs> on Vedanta Sutras, therefore, there was an objection that we are not <coughs> bona fide parampara. And then Balde Vidya Bhushan wrote this commentary in Govindev Temple in Jaipur. So, any bona fide sampradaya in a Rishi parampara must have their own commentary on Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishad, something like that. So Srila Prabhupada is feeling there was a need of a commentary on Bhagavad Gita in proper parampara. There are innumerable interpretations rendered by the different mundane scholars. But almost all of them do not accept the Supreme Personal Godhead Krishna, although they make a good business on the words of Sri Krishna. This spirit is demonic because they don't accept Krishna, but they use the teaching of Krishna for their personal benefit. So they have a separate interest than Krishna, therefore they are demons. They have a demonic spirit. Because demons do not believe in God, but simply enjoy the property of the Supreme Lord. They don't accept God, but they accept the property of the God as their own and enjoy it. Since there is a great need of an edition of Gita in English as it is received by the Parampara Disciplic Succession system, an attempt is made herewith to fulfill this great want. So Prabhupada is saying, I am writing this Gita based on the Balde Vidya Bhushan's commentary, Vishwanath Chakra Thakur's commentary, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's commentary. So, at least three of these commentaries Srila Prabhupada has referred and, 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 uh, and the Balde Vidya Bhushan and uh, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, they have referred to the commentaries of the uh, Ramanuj Madhva and other Acharyas also. Mm -hmm. So, the Bhagavad Gita accepted as it is, is a great boon to humanity. Boon means a blessing. But if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculation, it is simply a waste of time. So this should not be accepted as a philosophical book rather than, rather than a devotional blessing. 
going to the verse number three. Saevayam mayate adhya yoga prokta puratanaha bhaktosi me sakha cheti raesyam haitad uttamam. Krishna is saying, Sa, Sa means same Bhagavad Gita which I spoke to the sun god. Eva aham. I. Sa eva ayam puratanaha. Sa eva ayam puratanaha. Only this is the same thing. I am not changing anything. Eva means only same thing. Exactly. Sa eva ayam puratana. Puratana means old. Puratan means oldest. Sa maya, sa ev ayam mayate by me, te means unto you, adhya means today. Yoga, prokta is speaking, puratana, the oldest one which I spoke to the sun god. Why? Arjun was really surprised. Why I am selected? Why not Bhisham Pitama, who is elder in our dynasty, and a, one of the Mahabhagavata also? Why not Yudhishthir, my elder brother? Why am I specifically chosen for this uh, parampara? Then Krishna gives the reason. <coughs> it's truly when I speak in my own understanding, when Krishna says Yogo Nashta Parantapa, Arjun was actually little morose that oh in our family, in our param in our say ruling class of Panda ones are the core of ones coming from the Maharaj Kuru, there is no Raj Rishi. It means we don't understand Bhagavad Gita. There is so pity on our dynasty, then Krishna immediately said, I am making you the next Rajrishi of the Gita Parampara. So Arjun was immediately surprised. Why, am I, why are you making me? Then Krishna gives the two reasons. Bhakto si me. Because you are my great devotee. Sakha cheti as well as my friend. Because you have a relationship with me. And you know the secret of relationship between the two friends. The secret is the secret things are always spoken between two friends because there's a faith. Rahasyam means secret. High means definitely, surely, certainly. Etad means this. Uttamam. Tama means ignorance. Uta means above. It means transcendental. At one place, Srila Prabhupada translated Uttam means transcendental knowledge. Jigyasu Shriha Uttamam. When this verse of Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada was explaining, the word Uttam he has translated as Tama means ignorance, U means above that, it means transcendental knowledge. So, spiritual master impart Devya Gyan, Hirdaya Prokati Sita. That is called Uttam Gyan, is called transcendental knowledge. That is spiritual master impart to the disciple. And that is called actually initiation. Diksha Kali, at the time of initiation, Divao Jnana Dadao. Jiva Goswami explained this like that. So now this is the Krishna is acting as a guru and Arjuna is a recipient of this knowledge as a disciple. Because Arjuna has already accepted in second chapter Sishyastriyam Sadi Maam. I am your disciple, please instruct me. So Krishna is instructing this transcendental knowledge or Divya Gyan, which is also called Uttamam. <coughs> Srila Prabhupada right? there are two classes of men, namely the devotees and demons. Where is that? 
Anybody can tell me? Where is the... I'm coming to third chapter. Third chapter, it is, I think, third, third verse, 3.3, I think. There are two types of people, Dui Vida, Karma Yogi and Sankhya. But here this is called devotees and demons. It's different. It's different. There is a, there is a uh, Diva Vida. There, there's not two type of people. There are there are two paths uh, followed by the transcendentalist. There's, there's not there's Dui Vida, Pra Prokta, Maya Anaga. This verse is like goes like that. You have not done this now till now, it is in 16th chapter. Divao imao loke deva asura evacha The word is uh, uh, exactly it is said Divao sarago Divao sarago imae loke deva asura evacha devo vistraha Prokta Asura Meshrano, this verse goes like that. There's a two type of creation. Sargo means creation. The demonic creation and divine creation. Whole 16th chapter is. What is the name of the 16th chapter? Deva Asura Vibhaga Yoga. The demonic and divine nature. That is exactly what Srila Prabhupada is writing here. The Lord selected Arjuna as the recipient of the great science owing to his being a devotee. Because Srila Prabhupada already discussed there are demons, they have misinterpreted Bhagavad Gita. But for the demon it is not possible to understand this great mysterious science. Great mysterious means rasyam. Great mysteriums, mysterious science means raisyam of the verse. In the verse, the word raisyam, Srila Prabhupada writes, great mysterious science. So demon, demons cannot understand. So what is actually great mysterious in this? Great mysterious in this is Janma Karamcha Medhivyam. The appearance of the Krishna and his activities are Leela are actually great mysterious signs which demons cannot understand. Only devotees with faith can understand. That is actually the great mysterious signs. There are number of edition of this great book of knowledge. Some of them have commentaries by the devotees like Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, Vidya Bhushan. And some of them have commentaries by demons. Yes, there are many people, they have commented on Bhagavad Gita and taking Krishna out of Bhagavad Gita. They will write Paramatmane Ramnama, they will write Brahma, Krishna is Brahm. Uh, this is a person Krishna, there is a Brahm inside who is actually the God, not the Krishna. Commentation by the devotees is real, whereas that of demon is useless. Arjuna accept the Krishna as the Supreme Person of Godhead. That is the criteria of a devotee. And any commentary on the Gita following in the footsteps of Arjuna is real. Devotional service to the cause of this great science. So criteria for the demonic and devotee commentary is that those who accept Krishna as a personality of Godhead, their commentaries are called devotional. And those who don't accept Krishna are not utter a single time word named Krishna in their commentary. They are envious of Krishna, therefore they are demonic commentaries and they should not be accepted. <coughs> the demonic, <coughs> however, do not accept Lord Krishna as he is. Oh, he is a great politician. Oh, he is a great intellectual. But the God is inside Krishna, not Krishna. But somebody inside Krishna. Instead, they concord something about Krishna and mislead great general readers from the path of Krishna's instruction. Here is a warning about such misleading path. 
one should try to follow the disciple instruction from Arjun and thus be benefited by this great sense of Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita. Verse number four. Now Arjun is taking responsibility to make certain things clear. As a faithful friend and devotee of Krishna, that people should not misunderstand Krishna as a blind follower. So, Arjuna Vacha Aparam Bhavato Janam Param Janam Vivasvata Kathame Tadvijane Yam Tomadav Prokthana Iti. Arjun's question is very simple and straightforward. Arjun word means straightforward. Raju. Like a like a tree Arjun. It's a very straight and white. It means he is faultless and very straightforward. He said A param bhavato janma param janam vivasvataha. You are of my age and vivaswan was very very old. Katham etam vijanev, how can I really understand this? That you spoke to the sun god. Because he was older. You are of my age. How can I believe this? Balde Vidya Bhushan writes, Arjun then spoke to defeat the Ignorant people who doubt the omniscient and eternal nature of Krishna. So now Arjuna wants Krishna to speak about his omniscience and eternal nature. Omniscience means he is present all times. And eternal nature means he is always merciful eternally for the living entities. In a Sakha Ras. So how could he not believe Krishna's words? A devotee will accept what Krishna says. So why is this question? The fact is that Arjun is not inquiring for himself. But for those who do not believe in the Supreme Personality of God. Or for the demons who do not like the idea that Krishna should be accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For them only Arjuna inquire on this point. As if he were himself not aware of the Personality of Godhead as a Krishna. So Arjuna is uh, asking this on the, for making the things clear for the ordinary people and also making people aware about the demonic nature and commentaries of the people. As it will be evident from the 10th chapter, Arjuna knew perfectly well that Krishna is the Supreme Person of Godhead. Param Brahm, Param Dham, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavam, Purusham, Shashvatam, Divyam, Adi Devam, Ajam Vibhum, Aushtvarishya, Sarve, Devrishis, Narado, Tasa, Asito Deva Lo Vyasa. So these are the verses in 10th chapter. The fountain head of everything and the last word in the transcendence. So he knows the eternal nature of Krishna and his omniscience. Of course, Krishna also appeared as the son of Devaki on this earth. How Krishna remained the same Supreme Person of Godhead? The eternal original person is a very difficult for an ordinary man to understand. Therefore, to clarify this point, Arjun put this question before Krishna so that Krishna himself could speak authoritatively. That Krishna's supreme authority is accepted by the whole world, not only at the present time, but from the immemorial, time immemorial, and the demons alone reject him. So Krishna is accepted as supreme authority by 
Asita, Devala, Vyasa, Narada. Then Prabhupada is giving the list of the present time. Madhva, Ramanuja, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Krishna is accepted by all the devotees. Anyway, since Krishna is the authority accepted by all, Arjuna put this question before him and ordered that. Krishna would describe himself without being depicted by the demons who always try to distort him in a way understandable to the demons and their followers. So let Krishna speak about himself. Then it is authoritative. Once Srila Prabhupada was in some foreign countries where the, there were many churches and people were quite pious. They asked Srila Prabhupada, why you have come here? What is your mission? What is your message? Prabhupada leniently said, well, you are all very pious people. There are nice churches and you go and pray. So it's very nice. Then, then, then they said, then why you have come? What is your message? Then Krishna said, or then Srila Prabhupada said, I have most authoritative message given by God himself. So what is that? It's a Bhagavad Gita. It is most authoritative given by God himself. So Arjun wants Krishna to speak about himself. Then nobody can disbelieve that it is not authoritative. It is necessary that everyone for his own interest know the science of Krishna. Science of Krishna means omniscience of Krishna and eternal nature of Krishna. Therefore, when Krishna himself will speak about himself, it is auspicious for all the worlds. It is for everybody on every planet. It is very auspicious. So Bhagavad Gita is very auspicious and when I am saying this, I am just, why I am saying this because most of the people sometimes say, oh, Bhagavad Gita is in Mahabharata and nobody should keep Mahabharata in the home because it is inauspicious. No, this is the most auspicious for all the worlds. This is also demonic people have devised the means to divert the people from the understanding Bhagavad Gita. Oh, no, don't keep these books in home. Mahabharata, our picture of Krishna and Arjun. No. This is also demonic interpretation. To the demons, such explanation by Krishna himself may appear to be strange. Because the demons always study Krishna from their own standpoint. But those who are devotees heartily welcome the statement of Krishna when that is spoken by Krishna himself. Now see Krishna is speaking himself. Duryodhana was not listening to him, not accepting him. There are people always who are of the nature of the Duryodhana. They will not believe in Krishna when he is speaking. And there are Pandavas also. And they were accepting everything Krishna says as the final word. There's a final word. So always there are two type class of people. Those who believe in Krishna and those who do not believe in Krishna. This is actually the criteria given in a Padma Puran. Vishnu, Bhakta, Prokta, Sura. Tad Vipriha Asuraha. Those who are devotees of the Vishnu or Krishna, they are called divine. Those who are against that, they are called Asura. So devotees will always worship such authoritative statement of Krishna because they are always eager to know more and more about him. The atheist demon who consider Krishna as an ordinary man, may in this way come to know that Krishna is superhuman, that he is Satchit Anand Vigra. The eternal form of bills and knowledge, that he is transcendental and that he is above the 
domain of the modes of material nature and about the influence of the time and space. This is the meaning of the eternal nature of Krishna. What is the eternal nature of Krishna? Then you write this. Krishna, the, the, the person Krishna is Satchit Anand Vigra. And it, is give, and it is told by Brahma, Ishwar Paramakrishna Satchit Anand Vigra, Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karan Karana. Number two. That he is transcendental to what? To three modes of material nature. And number three, he is beyond the time and space. So he is not within the jurisdiction of the time which is in this material world, present, past and future. He knows present, past and future. Because he is present in present, past and future. And his space means place. So his omniscience. So these lines, sir, where Swar Srila Prabhupada has written, is he has explained the eternal nature of Krishna. A devotee of Krishna like Arjun is undoubtedly above any misunderstanding of transcendent position of Krishna. Arjun's putting this question before the Nara is simply an attempt by a devotee to defy the atheistic attitude of a person who considers Krishna to be an ordinary human being subject to the modes of material nature. Verse number 5 Krishna is giving answer. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Bahuni Mere Dveti Tani Jarmani Tava Charjana Tani Aham Ved Sarvani Natvam Vetat Parantapa Lord said, You and I have gone through many births. I know all of these. But you do not, O Parantapa. So Krishna appeared many times. So Arjuna also appeared many times. That is the question. Balde Vidya Vishnu says, Though I am one, I have many eternal forms. And, and Vishnu Chakur Thakur says in this verse, Lord explained that he instructs through the agency of his avatar. I appear as, as various avatars. And also you appear at that time as my companion. I know since I am om omniscient. So now we are coming to Śrīla Prabhupāda's commentary. In the Brahma Santa, we have information of many, many incarnations of Lord. So Śrīla Prabhupāda is taking the Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's purport. That Krishna is speaking that many times I appeared, it means He appeared as an incarnation. So now, Usually I used to tell at this stage there are three principles. One principle is that body is born and what is born is going to die. So death and birth is pertaining to the body. The next principle is soul only appears and disappears because it is eternal. It never it is never born and never dies. But, but appearance and disappearance of the soul is not independent, is subject to his karma and is by the divine arrangement. It is not by his will, but it is by the Deva Netrena. He is put in certain womb by the superior arrangement according to his karma, not by his own desire. Third principle is that God also appears. 
but he appears not by his karma, but by his all merciful sweet will, by his causeless mercy. So Srila Prabhupada is quoting this word, Advaita Machutta Manadim Anantarupam. He has Anantarup. And there is one, Advaita, he is one. He is Achut, he never fall. It means he is not subject to the, any karma. Anadim, and he is original person. And he has many forms. Adyam, and he is ori- uh, uh, from the beginning. Purana Purusham. Nava Yovanam Cha Adyam Purana Purusham Purana means oldest personality. But he is always new. Nava Yovanam Cha. So when he gave to the Surya Dev, then it was pur- Puratan Gyan. It is a Puranam Purusham. He gave as a Puran Purusham. Now he is giving to the Arjuna as Nava Yovanam Cha. He is giving as a new, in a new form. Vedeshu Durlabham. It is not possible to know through the Vedas. Adurlabham, Atma, Bhakto, but those who are great devotees, they can easily, it's available easily for them. Govinda Madhi Pusham Tamam Bajam. Although expanded into unlimited form, he is still the same original oldest, and the person always appearing as a fresh youth. Such eternal, blissful, all knowing form of Lord are usually not understood by even the best Vedic scholars. But they are always manifest to pure, unalloyed devotees. It is also stated in Brahma Santa, Rama di Murti Shukala Nyame Natishtan Nana Avatara Makroda Bhuvane Shubhintu Krishna Soyam Sambhavata Param Pumanyo Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami so again you can read the translation. In the Vedas also it is said that Lord, although one without a second manifests himself in innumerable forms, he is like the Vaidurya stone analogy, which change color yet still remain one. So this whole concept Srila Prabhupada is speaking till now is Vishuna Chakravarti Thakur's purport that Krishna is teaching through his avatar. All those multi-forms are understood by the pure unalloyed devotee, but not by the simple study of Veda. Devotees like Arjun are constant companion of Lord. When Lord appears, Arjun also appears. So Arjun's appearance are not by karma. He is eternal associate of Krishna. And whenever Lord incarnate, it means avatar, he takes avatar. The associate devotee also incarnate in order to serve the Lord in different capacities. Arjuna is one of these devotees who is the eternal associate of Krishna. And in this verse it is understood that some millions of years ago when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to Sun God Vivaswan, Arjun in a different capacity was also present. At least we know Nara Narayan is also Krishna and Arjun. They are in Badri Kashram. Nara Narayan is also one of the previous incarnation of Krishna and Arjun. Similarly, there was an incarnation of Krishna and Arjun at a time when Krishna spoke to Sun God. Arjun was there. But the difference between the Lord and Arjun is that Lord remembered the incident where as Arjun could not. There is the difference between the part and parcel living entity and the Supreme Lord. Why is that? Anybody can speculate why? Why is that? Because our body is material. Yes, that is the answer. That is the answer. We change body, even the eternal soul change body. But Lord's body is transcendental. Lord never change body, is achyuta. So now you write one line 
forgetfulness of the living entity is due to change of body. And Krishna never changed body, he appears in his same form, eternal form. Therefore, he never forget anything. Although Arjuna is addressed here in as mighty hero who could subdue the enemies, he is unable to recall that what, he, what happened in his various past births. Therefore, a living entry, however great he may be, in the material estimation, can never equal the Supreme Lord. Anyone who is a constant companion of the Lord is certainly a liberated person, but he cannot be equal to the Lord. The Lord is described in the Brahma Santa in Achyutta, which means that he never forget himself, even though he is in material contact. So you write this definition of Achyutta, because you will get another meaning of Achyutta at different places. So this is one of the meaning of Achyutta among many, that he never forget himself, he always remember himself. Therefore the Lord and the living entities can never be equal in all respect, even, even if the living entity is as liberated as Arjuna. Although Arjuna is a devotee of Lord, he sometimes forget the nature of the Lord. He sometimes forget the nature of the Lord. But by the divine grace, means by the mercy of the Lord, a devotee can at once understand the infallible condition of the Lord, Achyutta. Whereas non-devotees are a demon, cannot understand this transcendental nature, which Krishna is going to speak in the next verse, his transcendental nature. Consequently, these descriptions in Gita cannot be understood by demonic brains. Krishna remembered acts which were performed by him millions of years before, but Arjuna could not. Despite the fact that both Krishna and Arjuna are eternal in nature, as a Arjuna as a soul is eternal, and Krishna as such as Anand Vigra, Adi Purush is also eternal. We may also note here in that living entities forget everything due to his change of body. But the Lord remembers because he does not change his Satchit Anand body. He is Advaita. There is no two, he is one. Which means there is no distinction between his body and himself. Now, uh, you may have different, we can get different meaning of Advait in different uh, contexts. So you write this meaning of Advait also. Advait here means there is no difference between his body and himself. This is a very different meaning of Advait by Śrīla Prabhupāda here. Everything in relation to him is his spirit. It means there is no difference between his soul and body, everything is his spirit. Whereas the conditioned soul is different from his material body. And because the Lord's body and the self are identical, his position always different from that of ordinary living entity, even when he descends to the material platform. The demons cannot adjust themselves to this transcendental nature of the Lord, which the Lord Himself explained in the following verses. I think we can continue next time further because uh, it is here getting to be 6.30 and I have a next class, say within half an hour or so, uh, here for them on site. So you have any question or comment? Hare Krishna, yes. Any question or comment? Hare Krishna, Dandam Pranam Prabhuji. Yes. Okay, the, this knowledge is given by Lord Krishna to the Vivaswan, Sun God, 
and uh, it is distributed around the world. But uh, various religion is existing around the world. Uh, why Prabhu? First point. The second point is uh, the person who don't believe in Krishna is called demon. Then there are people who believe only in demigods like Shivites and uh, in some other part, some other god. So can we? How we can justify this, Hare Krishna? Krishna include Krishna in all his incarnation, his energies, and also the bona fide spiritual masters. So Krishna does not mean only Krishna. Krishna includes everything. This uh, you will learn in Bhakti Rasamit Sindhu when we discuss the definition of Uttama Bhakti. Anya Bilashita Sunyam Gyan Karmadi Anabhatam Anukuliena Krishna Anusilanam Bhakti Ruttama where Krishna Prabhupada described include everything. So those even who believe the energy of the Krishna they are also in knowing Krishna but not directly but indirectly. So they are not very intelligent but uh, it doesn't mean that they are demons. The demons are outright atheists who do not believe in God. All those religions which are on the planet, planet, they are believing God in some form. They all believe in God, either in his impersonal form or the form of his representative, like Son of God. The God and Son of God, there is no difference. Sri so, Prabhupada was asked this question by a by a um, you know, by a reporter on a live television show. Those who believe in Bible and follow the Jesus, will they go back to Godhead? Prabhupada said, yes. And the same question was asked simultaneously sitting on the stage a Christian priest. And the commentator asked this question from him. Those who follow Bhagavad Gita and teaching of Lord Krishna go to the God? He said, no. So there was an applause in people. They said, here is a person who is all encompassing. encompassing. He said, yes, if you follow the Bible properly and follow the Son of God, then why you will not go back to the Kingdom of God? Well, Kingdom of God has a different concept. Vekunta, there is a Brahma. Brahma is also Kingdom of God. Vekund is also kingdom of God. So Prabhupada was all inclusive because he know Krishna include everything. There is nothing which is outside Krishna. And therefore he never rejected any religion. He said all the religions on the planet are bona fide in their per per proper uh, context. Uh, it is like uh, the meaning of the word in a dictionary, pocket dictionary, is also the same meaning in a uh, in a Webster dictionary, but there are ten more meaning of the same words, same word. So Shri Prabhupada used to them um, all the religion; they are the different uh, meaning of the same concept. But the Sanatan Dharma is like an all encompassing uh, dictionary, which has a variety of the meanings. So, those bona fide religions which are on the planet, which may be Christianity or Mohammedan religion or Buddhism, they are bona fide in some particular respect. It's not that they are uh, false. They are true because they, they believe in God in some form. But there are other people who are who do, who do not believe in any religion. They are atheist and demonic. And also in our own, uh, even in a Hindu tradition, there are people. They are. They don't believe in the form of the God. They have a more demonic nature than, like Christianity, believe in form of God. If there's a there's a son of God, he has a form. Then how can not God has a form? Like the Muslim dharma is Namaskar Pradhan dharma. 
When in this dharam there is a namaz, which means namaskar. All the time, one of the four items of Bhagavad Gita, Mam Namaskuru, they are always paying obeisance to the Lord. And Christian religion is a, a prayer oriented religion, Prathna Pradhan Dharam. They have always prayers. And there is a Vandana Bhakti, which we are doing every day prayers to the Lord. But what we have a love of God that is different. If we completely disparam dharam are different aspect. So it is like, like more higher study of the dharma, which is the PhD of the dharma. They are like graduation in the dharma that is also bona fide. Same university give the graduation and same university also give the post graduation. So we have to first differentiate who are demons and who are devotees. And then devotees may have a different faith according to their understanding of the same one God. So our Achar is Prashila Prabhupada as well as Bhakti Vinod Thakur. They are, they are really having a same spirit of encompassing religion, including everything within Krishna consciousness. Is it okay? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. Daniel Pranam. I had a small doubt. Prabhuji, in 4.2 you were saying that this Raja Rishi uh, is no more, like Raja Rishi Parampara. But yeah, then, it, 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 it is often time broken. Right now there is no Raja Rishi. There is no any king who is actually enthroned on the kingdom by the Rishis by the Abhishek and they have, they don't have even crowns. The Raj Rishis were put onto the throne by the by the priest, by the great by scholars, Brahmins, and by Vedic mantra, and then there was a special crown put on their head. Right now they are put on the seat by the vote of the common people. So they are not Raj Rishis anymore. Yes. So Prabhuji, but when we read Bhagavad Gita, we are reading a conversation between like Krishna and Arjuna. But so, that is understood in our Rishi Parampara. Then we have a list of the Parampara in the Bhagavad Gita. We follow this Parampara which is Rishi Parampara, not Raj Rishi Parampara, because we are not king. So Raj Rishi Parampara is for the kings. And we have a Parampara of the Rishis. Out of the four parampara of the Vaishnava, we follow the Gaudiya Vaishnava parampara. Okay. Yes. Because there is no name of Arjuna in this parampara. You go and see in our book Bhagavad Gita. Yes, Prabhuji. Because so, no, after, Arjun, like... after Arjun, there is no Raj Rishi. In fact, up till Prabhupada used to say, Maharaj Parikshat was the last Raj Rishi like that. Maybe like, like sometime like after that Kali Yuga started and then there, there's no more Raj Rishi. And therefore Prabhupada said, I felt the need for uh, giving the uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is for the general people here. So uh, in, in one way Srila Prabhupada really re-established the uh, Rishi Parampara in the same way as Krishna re-established the Raj Rishi Parampara. Okay. Thank you. How are you both? Okay. So Prabhuji, uh, can I say that like, uh, uh, even though the Raj Rishi Parampara was distorted, but uh, Prabhupada like, uh, understood and conveyed that like because he's taking the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna right though it was later distorted yeah, yeah, uh, he 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 only he has taken actually the commentary of Balde Vida Bhushan in our own Rishi Parampara and uh, Chakravarti Thakur and he also mentioned that Anybody who understands Bhagavad Gita as Arjun understood is actually a real student of Bhagavad Gita. So he is in one way, though he is in a parampara of the uh, Vaishnava parampara of the Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, but he is also accepting the Arjun as a Rishi parampara, second Rishi parampara by Raj Rishi parampara by Krishna. 
See, we have to accept Bhagavad Gita as Arjun has accepted. And the same mood our Acharya has accepted. So, Srila Prabhupada is, uh, is combining both together for us, for our understanding. Okay. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other question, comment, or we should end here? I'm going too slow, but what can I say? These are couple verses are really very more technical verses will come soon in the next class. All right. Okay, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 